Welcome to another JJ in the Field. Timely agronomic tips when you need them most. I'm your host, Jonah Johnson. Today we are here in a wheat field up in beautiful Huron County and we were called to the field to do some diagnostics. So if you can relatively see behind me, to my left, your right, the wheat gets darker green. Then to my right or your left up on the hill, um, you'll see that it, it, the stands aren't as dense and the plants aren't as robust. So we're sitting between uh, about the split of what we figured out happened was fertilizer in the fall. So, you know, if your you know, common wheat recommendations in the fall, we put on about 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen and some type of phosphorus and potassium. So whether or not it's a DAP or a MAP fertilizer. And unfortunately, to my right, the field was skipped. And outside around the perimeter of the field, it received fertilizer. And to my left, your right, it received that starter fertilizer, if you will, back in the fall. And this is in 15 inch row wheat. And we noticed quite a bit of difference in just growth from over the winter. And so if you ever had any questions whether or not it's worthwhile to fertilize your wheat in the fall. University recommendations support the importance of fall fertilization because not only does the nitrogen help early season vigor, but that phosphorus is very important in regards to um, early season rooting, plant health, potassium of course is important in helping that plant deal with stress um, and with amino acid productions and, and others. So this has become uh, a debated question, especially in the 4R areas of how much fertilizer do I use. Um, you know, I've been a part of research in the past where fall fertilizer experiments have got skipped by accident, but in soils where you have high organic matter and uh, richer soil textures, then it was able to support. But when we start to see marginal soil changes, topography as you can see behind us, um, it's well noted that fertilizer, you know, is, is very much needed. So this time of year, um, you know, we're past the Feeks Grow Stage 3, that proverbial green up stage where that's not an actual stage, but it's a time of the season that usually indicates to us that the plants have broken winter dormancy and that we need to apply our, our nitrogen. If some of the more aggressive guys, it may split their nitrogen. They may put some on in the spring at green up. Uh, typically recommend counting plants at that time and when we're in above 30 plants per square foot, that's a pretty good indicator. We got good enough plants and we can alter our nitrogen to that. At Feeks growth stage six, that's our next big growth stage that we're about to come to. And so that's when we reach AK jointing. And so when we reach jointing or that Feeks growth stage six, that little growing point um, has now become above the soil line. And so just like corn, when the growing point's above the ground, now it's more susceptible to environmental stresses, hail events, um, anything that can damage or defoliate that plant at that growth stage. So other things that's really important in this growth stage, a lot of major herbicides start to become off-label at this point. So any of the growth regulators like 2,4-D and dicamba come off at six. Um, also, once we get to Feeks growth stage eight, um, other herbicides like the Harmony family and Culex, they begin to shift off and go off label. And so one way to tell what is your growth stage of wheat um, is to cut those plants longitudinally with a sharp box knife and you can see that small head within that wheat plant. Um, and when that shows you that, you'll know you're at jointing. Another way, once it has gone above the ground, that joint will be a swollen spot on that plant. So if you were to reach down and grab that plant, you'll feel that swollen spot kind of like my knuckle of my finger and you'll know that's where that first joint has occurred in those wheat plants. So that's a great indicator to know where your, your plants are at that current time. Some other things that are coming up, um, hopefully after you've got your top dressing done and your nitrogen applied, that uh, we're starting to consider, you know, is the environment conducive to foliar diseases in wheat? And so once we get up to um, F, F8, Feex Growth Stage 8 and the 9, 9 is when the flag leaf, that final leaf starts to emerge out of the sheath of the plant. That's what we're really concerned about protecting. So in years that then we have wet, humid, years or hot and humid years like more for uh, rust um, when that occurs that's a in good indicator to timings that we'll look at foliar diseases so obviously the flag leaf is like the ear leaf and corn where that produces most of the photosynthetic activity for the wheat in developing heads um, and filling those grain kernels uh, later in the year so those are some of the things to keep in mind as we're going after uh, our wheat production at this time of year. We're going to check back with this field here in May and do some head counts and relate this back to what we saw this growing season. So if you have further questions, feel free to reach out to your local ASA or anybody on the PCT team. Uh, this is Jonah Johnson. Thanks for watching.